You stay. You stay. You stay. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you are well trained. Yes, yes, yes. I told you to stay. Ah, ah, okay, 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 okay. Okay, okay. Ah, okay, I love you too, I love you too. Yes, baby girl, ah, yes, yes. Okay, okay. <laughs> ah, ah. That was Coco, my well-trained German Shepherd. Um, I've had her now for a little over a year, and I love her. <laughs> All right, so quick word of warning. If you're looking for a cost-effective replacement for a woodcutting board or end grain board, Rubber boards, especially those that are made in Japan, are not going to be your answer. But those who are leaning towards a rubberized or a plastic cutting board, they have a lot to offer. So in this video, I'll go through all the boards I've tested over the last two years and hopefully help you decide which one's right for you. Um, so I've been using the Hasegawa boards over the last year. Those were the main boards in my home, so I'll talk about them first. And then afterwards, I'll talk about these uh, one, two, three, four boards that I was using the year before. So I'll post links in the video description below to all of these boards here. You can find them all on Amazon, basically. If you guys follow my channel now for anything longer than two years, you'll know that the first, basically first two years of my channel, I used a lot of wooden cutting boards. And I still love them, they're great. Um, but I started moving more towards rubberized and plastic boards because I was doing a lot more raw fish and raw ingredients. And so I wanted to be able to bring my boards from my countertop to my sink. And so with a two inch thick cutting board, that's a bit more cumbersome. And you know, if you're gonna be constantly washing your board, you gotta really make sure that you stay on top of the oiling and the polishing or else the board, especially an end grain board will tend to warp. All right, so to be honest, there are a lot of positives when it comes to rubber cutting boards. And there's a reason why I use them almost exclusively now. But there are some negatives as well, and I need to just kind of put them out there and get them out the way so that you guys can know what to expect if you're looking at rubberized cutting boards, especially those that are made in Japan. You can probably find on Amazon a wooden cutting board this size for $30, $40 that is claimed to be handmade. I can't verify, you know, individually what they are um, or if they're handmade or not, but you do find cutting boards in that price range. You can even find end grain cutting boards that are two inches thick, roughly this size for about $100. The second con is that they tend to discolor quite a bit more relative to other boards that I've used. Now, you have to take that with a grain of salt because these boards here have been used in my home, like I said, for a whole year. They haven't been scrubbed with bleach and with the brushes that they recommend cleaning them with, which I'll talk about in just a minute. So I intentionally left them kind of stained um, as they are on purpose, just to show you guys how they look after a whole year of use. And when you are comparing them to wooden cutting boards, because of the texture of the wood and that natural grain you're looking at, it hides a lot of the stain that you probably would have on wooden cutting boards as well. So you have to just understand that even though they do tend to stain because of the nature of their material, they will show that stain a bit more than a wooden cutting board. But, you know, hygienically, is that a real word? <laughs> Hygiene, hygienically, or hygienically, I don't think they're, they're any worse than wood cutting boards. So the biggest positive I have found using these boards is edge retention. Like, hands down, I have never found any boards or any board materials that have given me better edges on my knives or have helped my knives' edges last longer than these boards here. Now, Part of it, I think, is because of the texture that they're using on these Hasegawa boards. The Asahi boards and the Hisoft boards, they are a flat texture or more like a smooth texture. It's a brush smooth texture, but pretty much a smooth texture. The boards that we have here, if you hear them, if I can describe the texture to you, it's like a row or an entire grid of inverted pyramids, mini pyramids, press onto a rubber material. That's what the texture feels like to me. It's a very nice texture, a very luxurious feeling texture. And this texture here, I think it has a lot to do with why my knives have lasted so long, um, or the edges of my knives have lasted so long. My most recent video, I talked about having some knives, the Avogama Supers, I hope that edges lasted for about five months before I felt like I needed to sharpen them. Back when I was using wooden cutting boards exclusively in my home, I would find that anything from VG10 to SG2 to Algami Supers, uh, white number two, blue number two, would last between two and three months of use in my home before I felt like their edges needed sharpening. ZDPs would last about three to four months, but ever since I have switched to the Hasegawa boards, knives, even VG10s would last three to four months without feeling, you know, that dullness at all. Okay, so I have the complete lineup of Hasegawa boards here. 
The two I have right here are the FRK. Um, they're slightly different sizes, but they are both of the FRK line. And the white and the brown one I've got over here are from the FPE line and the FSB line. And then this massive one I've got down here is the FSR line. It's actually so big that my upper camera can't even see the entire board. <laughs> so it's big, it's like 35 inches by 18 or something like that. Massive, massive board. Let's just simplify one thing really quickly here. The FSR, so this is the FSR, the high-end line, and the FRK. They are essentially the same material. They use the same type of wood core, they have the same texture on the surface, and they actually are using, at least based on my personal experience, they're using the exact same surface as well. These two on my, uh, my left and my right, these are the FRK, and this one right here is the FSR. Really simple, the FRK and the FSR are essentially the same type of board surface and the same core materials. The major difference between them is that the FSR, the high-end FSR series, offers a lot more sizing. You cannot get the FRK in this massive size board, but the FRK line, you have about three to four sizes. Um, you have this size here. Um, this is a double wide. I wanna say this is like 18 by nine or 18 by 10. Um, this one here is about 16 by 10 or so. Is it the same? Yeah, roughly 16 by 10. This board here is about an inch thick. This is the FSR. And the FRK, these are both about three quarter inches thick. Okay, so that's gonna be the main difference, uh, the sizing. And I think the FSR, when you go to the lower, um, or I shouldn't say the lower, the smaller sizing FSR boards, they are the roughly, I think they are the same thickness as the FRK. Um, the only main difference, again, is you can see that really thick banding um, that's in the middle, that core cover. It's white. It's got a solid white. And then on the FRK, there is a white and clear banding that goes around the side of the board. So if you're looking to choose between the FRK and the FSR, the FRK <laughs> will probably work better for you if you were uh, a home user and you just needed a cutting board that will work for you. If you're looking to outfit a restaurant and you have large countertops with you know huge workspaces, the FSR will offer more sizing. This is uh, basically the largest board for an individual that I would use, uh, at least for my home. I got it here because I was hoping to bring in some sushi chefs to work with me, but because of COVID, that hasn't happened yet. So that's why I have this massive board here. <laughs> so now we have the two other boards here. We have the FPE, which is the white one. And then we have the FSB, which is the brown one here. So what is the difference between the FPE and the FSB? Well, it really comes down to just color. They have all of the same options. They have the same sizing options. They have the same texture on the surface. There is nothing else. I wish they would just simply make it one line and call it the brown option and the white option. Um, so let me just make it easy for myself. It may be easy for you. I'm gonna call it the white board, the brown board, the high-end tan board, and the mid-tier tan board, okay? So when I say white boards, it means the brown board as well. And when I say the tan boards, it means the FSR and the FRK. Okay. <laughs> oh, it's so. This is. I don't know how this is gonna. Get, I don't know how I'm gonna edit this, but it'll come out. The only difference between the white boards and the brown boards is that just the color. They have the same sizing options. They have the same thickness. They have the same core. Except the white board has a blue stripe, and the brown board has a white stripe. They feel exactly the same. The surface feels exactly the same. They both have the same texture as the other tan boards. So if you are conflicted between the whiteboard and the brown board, just know that they are exactly the same other than color. Now I do put these black rubber legs, um, silicon legs on my boards. I like them because they kind of give my boards a little bit of height and they also quiet the boards down a little bit. When these boards are on the countertops, they do kind of direct that energy back towards me when I'm doing quick chops. So the silicon legs definitely absorb some of that energy. It also makes the boards a little bit quieter. These mats are by Hasegawa as well. They're really nice, but they're not cheap. The silicon legs will do essentially the same thing. They'll keep your boards from sliding around. And also, one thing to keep in mind, if you do get these mats, make sure that the mats are either the exact same size as your board or smaller. If they're bigger, food particles will fall off your board onto these mats and they kind of get stuck in between those little dots. And so that can get kind of annoying to wash. If the mat is smaller than the board, that won't be an issue at all. 
So I do use them. I actually use these mats um, <laughs> more for sharpening at this point than for my boards. Because my boards already have these silicon legs on them, I use the mat really for sharpening. They hold whetstones really nicely. Again, a negative with these boards here, I'd say, is how they stain. Now, Hasegawa do offer these scraper pads. One side has sandpaper-like texture. It's like a 400 or 600 grit sandpaper, if I had to kind of equate it to a number. The other side has these little, kind of these thistles, really short, like 0 0.05 millimeter long thistles that are grouped into these little dots. Because of their texture and length, their minimal length, they're able to get into the crevices or the cracks and that pattern of these Hasegawa boards and really clean them. However, these brushes will only take off food particles, not stains. So this board here is actually stained. Everything you see here, these are not food particles. No matter how much scrubbing you do with the rough side of this sponge, will not take care of what you see here. So after you have used the scrape to remove all the food particles from your board, they'll look like this after a year of use. <laughs> but after a year of use, if you want your boards to look brand new again, you simply will spray some bleach on it and it'll look just like that. And also a quick note, the tan boards will hold stains more than the white boards and the brown boards because of their materials. That material is softer uh, than the white boards. Um, the perfect size cutting board for my home currently is this one right here. It's 18 by 10. Um, I have a very small sink, or my sink is divided in half, or kind of like 60-40. And so one of the ways I kind of judge a perfect size cutting board is will it fit into the sink and kind of wash the entire board in the sink without having the edges stick over the sink and kind of get me wet. These boards here, the white one and the brown one, they're like 20 by 11 and a half or 20 by 12. And they tend to be just like an inch and a half too big, too wide for my sink. So for me, this 18 by 10 board is actually the perfect size board for my home. Um, this one here is also nice, it's 15 by 10. It's I don't like the, the the ratio as much. I like my boards a double wide. So this is essentially twice as wide as it is deep. I don't have a lot of counter space in my home. So for me, having a board that's wider makes more sense because I don't have a very deep counter in my home. So I bought this one. <laughs> this is a massive board. It's a 35 and a half by 18. And the reason why I bought it was because I was hoping to have uh, folks here in my in my studio to do some sushi lessons for me. But uh, with the pandemic, that's never happened. I've got three, four other boards here that were used extensively in my home the year prior to the Hasegawa boards. Um, this one here is made by Highsoft. It's made of a material called polyvinyl acetate. I don't know if that means anything to anybody, but that's what it's called. It's basically high-end rubber. Now, the negatives of this board. So let's get this out of the way. This board here, even though it was in my home for a period of about six months, I only used it maybe a dozen times. It leaves scratch marks like crazy. And so I don't know why. Um, the material just doesn't close back up as well as the Hasegawa boards. And so it leaves these very obvious scratch marks or cut marks on the board in all sorts of directions. And the second thing is staining. It stains a lot. Um, I don't know what this is. This could be carrots. I don't think it's cumin. I haven't cut cumin on this board. I'm pretty sure it's paninis, different ingredients from paninis. So you're looking at cheese, oils, and carrots. That's basically what my what my use is for this board here. And in the short, you know, short amount of time that I've used it, or the short few times that I've used this board, it has sustained a lot of damage, physical damage, visible damage, and it stains a lot. And the other thing about this board, which is interesting to me, is how much it weighs. So let me give you a reference of weight. This board here, it's um, 2.10 ounces, so nearly three pounds. And this board here is 2.15, so it's just under three pounds. It's roughly half the size as the Hasegawa, but only five ounces lighter. For a board this size, it feels nice. I like having some heft to my cutting boards. I actually took this out of my home this morning and I bleached the back just to see if I can get that staining off of it. I couldn't bleach it off. It wouldn't really be a concern necessarily. It would just be more of an annoyance. If you own this board and you are trying to get it nice and clean, you got some friends coming over and you want the board to look nice and new, uh, it's going to be a bit more involved to get this board clean than some of the other boards we've got here. 
But again though, it's a nice board. I like it. The material feels really nice cutting on it. It has a really nice matte appearance to it. Um, the texture is like um, a really fine sandpaper. That's the best way I can describe it. It's just really nice. It's got a nice satin finish to it. When I bought this board, it was about $50. So I wouldn't call that cheap for something, you know, that's this size. It is made in Japan, but still $50 for a board this size, kind of expensive. Putting aside the cost and the staining issue, being able to feel those cuts to me is the biggest issue with this board here. This is the Asahi. Um, this board I like a lot. This is the underside, which was my first use on this board. I cleaned it, then I flipped it over and used it on this side. The biggest issue with this one here is it is so thin. I believe it is a solid block of rubber um, or a synthetic rubber. You know, when you're cutting this board, especially when you're doing fast chops, all that energy gets deflected back to you. And so some people love that, some people don't. It doesn't absorb the knife cuts the way the Hasegawa's and the high soft boards do. And so these boards tend to be really good if you are a fast cutter, if you like a lot of fast chopping action, this board kind of gives you the best feedback for that. Um, the nice thing is this material isn't porous. So even though the marks are there, the marks aren't gonna really hold or they're not really deep enough to hold bacteria that you should be concerned about. But they do leave quite a bit of marks over time. Um, this here was sanded down. I actually sanded this side down with the scraper that we have right here. So I used the rough side to remove all the food stains and then the soft side or the smooth side to sand it down. And you can see it sands quite nicely. So it has a really nice look to it. It does clean up nicely. It's very easy to clean. So for people who are coming from wood cutting boards, this will feel the most, you'll feel the most at home on the Asahi uh, relative to the other two boards. Next two boards are both polyethylene boards and it's white, it's almost see-through. This is also made in Japan, by the way. And the texture of this one here is more of a dotted texture as opposed to like an inverted pyramid or a pyramid texture, a grid of pyramids. Um, the biggest concern I have this board here, and if I turn the board this way, the middle is off the board. And so the instructions for this board literally says that you need to flip this board every week or so. That's kind of annoying. So I did try this board with the legs on it. It did work. It kind of helps alleviate that issue with flex, but uh, it's just way too thin of a board for me. I think, you know, this sort of board here you would use if you were, I don't know, if you were, if you had a cabin somewhere or you're, or you're camping, you want to have something really thin and light to carry with you, this works well. But for a board to use at home, I wasn't a big fan of it. This black board here is 29 and a half by 13. So very wide board. It's quite nice. It's also about an inch thick. So this board here has the same problem with flex as the little white one. You would think that a board this thick wouldn't have the issue, but it must be the material. You can see the ends sticking up right now. And if we flip the board over, there's about a two millimeter gap from the board and the um, table, or in this case, the cutting board surface that it's sitting on. You can see right there, actually, can you see that? As it sits right now, this board is actually bending this way, okay? So what I did was I put the legs on, the rubber silicon legs onto sides, hoping that by using it, that the board would kind of press itself down in the middle and would kind of create a flattened surface. That never happened. I did that over the course of four or five months and it stayed flexed or stayed in that same position um, basically the entire time I've owned it. So it's not an issue. It's only, like I said, only about maybe one or two millimeters. It's just kind of an annoying thing, especially for someone like me who kind of looks for little details. And again, I'm looking for little details to kind of pick apart these boards. It's a nice material. It has a brush finish, which is really cool. Uh, it has a nice texture to it. Now the texture, it's kind of a double-edged sword because even though that's a really nice texture, you can see the scratches. It's just slightly annoying for a board of this price to have that, you know, that uh, characteristic. Now, what's really interesting about this board here, so when you first get this board, the board is essentially all black, and then as you use it, as you scratch it, those, those lines, they appear. 
And so over time, when you're using it for three, four, five months, so however long you're using it, those lines become kind of all blended and they leave these little white splotchiness on the board. And I'm sure if I used it over time, the entire board will look kind of gray. That's not going to ruin the integrity of the board. It's just something that is more of an eyesore than anything else. Yeah, so the rubber boards are really nice. I use them all the time now. I do have some other boards that I'm ordering that are going to be coming in here over the next few weeks. Um, every board that you see here, I'm going to be auctioning off to my Patreon supporters to say thank you for supporting me. Um, I don't really need this many cutting boards. <laughs> so um, you know, in my home, I have like three cutting boards at a time. So I've always got cutting boards kind of going in and out. And so all of these are going to be heading out soon. If you guys enjoy these in-depth reviews and comparisons, give the video a thumbs up, subscribe if you guys want to see more, and let me know if these other boards that you guys want me to test out, I'll do my absolute best to kind of see what people are asking for and pick up, you know, other products to maybe compare to what I'm using now. Thank you for being here, and I'll catch you in the next video. So that is the FRS. FRS, oh my goodness, these names are terrible. A clear plastic clothing. Clear clear, a clear plastic, to make it simple, between the FRK and the FRS, um, FRS, <laughs> FSR, FSR, the FSR